you just find yourself getting lost in the music. Soundstage of the three is the widest. Now, not by much. It has more conviction in its uh, dynamic power. I've never heard a small speaker do bass at that kind of depth with power and conviction and at low and medium volumes. So today we're gonna talk about three uh, stand-mounted speakers. So originally, <clears throat> I got this idea from a client of mine. Um, he was wondering how good the Daniel Hertz Ava speakers are. And so far, we've only talked about how good the system is. In other words, the Maria integrated with the Ava bookshelf speakers. So I thought, well, that's a really good idea. I haven't had a chance to listen to it and compare it with a bunch of other things and use other electronics as well. So um, I decided let's do that. So in this store, we have three uh, stand-mounted speakers sort of in the same price range. We have the Sonus Faber Olympica Nova 1 with its own stands. We have the Sonus Faber Electa Amateur 3 also with its own stand. And by the way, it, it, um, the, the elect Electa Amateur is absolutely stunning. The new finish is graphite. Uh, it's a graphite finish on solid walnut staves. And then the um, marble they chose to complement it with is called the Marquina, Marquina uh, marble. So at the bottom of the cabinet, you see this slab of beautiful dark marble. And then the stand that comes with it is again, uh, metal stands with the Marquino base as well. Absolutely stunning. Makes it a, a beautiful combination of um, traditional um, uh, wood uh, aesthetic, but makes it now contemporary looking. So you have the best of both worlds. And then the front, of course, is, is absolutely gorgeous leather. Anyway, so that's the other speaker. And then the third, of course, is the uh, Daniel Hertz Ava with its uh, museum grade plexiglass stand. So the prices are, the Olympic Nova one is 8,700 US dollars with the stands. The Electa Amateur three is 11,700 US. And the Ava is 11,325 US with stands. Now, the price of uh, the Ava is converted from Euro. So I'm just basing it on whatever the exchange pricing is at, at the time of recording. Um, okay, so the system that I used, um, includes the Maria integrated uh, set to flat, so there's no tuning for the speakers. Um, Hegel H330 integrated amp, and the Macintosh MA352 tube hybrid integrated. I use the Lumen U2 streamer, and an all Nordos cabling. So um, that's the system. The room is uh, 13 feet by 18 by nine foot ceilings, but the ceiling is actually a false ceiling. It's, it's um, acoustic tiles. The real ceiling is 20 feet above that. So as, as many of you know, acoustic tiles really don't do very much in terms of absorbing any um, power or range or bass for that matter. It just goes right through. It does something to do, it, it does some uh, absorption in the upper mid frequencies and treble. Uh, so, but the real ceiling is 20 feet tall. Uh, for, for the rest of the world, that's 4 meters by 5.5 meters by 2.7 meters, and the ceiling is uh, 6 meters. A real ceiling, I should say. The room is also very well uh, treated. We had originally planned the room to be our home theater slash music room, so we've got uh, uh, acoustic tiles and acoustic treatments from Vicoustic all over, uh, with, the, uh, with the exception of the front wall where we've got in the center uh, um, a video screen, and then of course a cabinet at the bottom of the screen and then speakers off to the side. So overall very well treated. Um, as I mentioned, all speakers were used on their dedicated stands. All right, <clears throat> so first up, the Olympica Nova 1. It's a one inch silk dome tweeter. It's um, a design that um, Sonus Faber, in fact, the drivers are all Sonus Faber design, manufactured specifically to their specifications. The Sonus Faber tweeters are silk dome, but with an added patent design. It has um, what they call the DAD, damped apex dome innovation. There's a little tiny arrowhead that touches the tip of the dome that helps control the resonance of the tweeter um, so that it actually can go much, much higher in frequency. It controls also the anti-phase cancellation um, and while still maintaining a very broad dispersion angle, something that 
most Silk Dome tweeters cannot do simultaneously. Most Silk Dome tweeters tend to roll off very quickly after about 15, 16,000 cycles. And if, you, if they treat it, um, then they'll go higher, but then the uh, dispersion angle tends to also narrow, and some people don't like that effect. The uh, woofer is a six inch paper pulp uh, combination. So it has the natural sound of paper, which uh, Sonus Arbor loves. It's also treated so it can last a very long time and still be also very rigid. Okay, sonic impressions. It had been a long time since I heard these speakers. Well, we, we, we have them here and we do quite well with it. Um, but it had been a long time since I heard it and I was immediately reminded of why I love Sonos Farber so much. Such a beautiful sounding speaker. A joy really to listen to it. Um, from upper bass on, it has this naturalness, um, a musicality that just brings you into the music. Uh, you, you just get drawn in so easily. And the details are wonderful. In the mid-range, you can hear all kinds of stuff in the recording so well without any kinds of harshness or exaggeration or brightness or glare, nothing like that. Just such a beautiful mid-range. Solus Faber's strength may, in fact, be their mid-range. So beautiful. The highs are extended and airy. As a matter of fact, of the three, I think that this speaker has the most sparkly, airy tweeter. Just absolutely beautiful almost like a very, very good diamond tweeter or uh, a beryllium tweeter, but without any kind of hardness that sometimes those kinds of tweeters can give you. Uh, absolutely superb. The um, sound stage of the three is the widest. Now, not by much, but it is definitely uh, uh, the widest of the three. However, it is also not the tallest. So I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, imaging is very sharp pinpoint with a bit of body, with a bit of three-dimensionality. Not the best of the three in terms of, of the uh, image size. Um, depth and layering is very, very good. Of the three, it is not the best. It's probably the third, but again, not by far. Um, but you can easily and clearly hear the separation of the layers and the depth is very good from where the speaker starts way behind the front wall is uh, when the recording has it. It's, it's quite, quite amazing. Bass is the weakest of all the um, uh, areas of performance. It doesn't go as low as the other two. It goes fairly low, it's relatively convincing, but on recordings that have uh, lower bass and has energy in the lower bass, it just doesn't produce that. So in this regard, the uh, Olympic Nova 1 is and has to be treated as a small stand mount speaker. For those of you who fall in love with the sound and you uh, budget wise it works for you and you love the way it looks uh, and you still want that deep bass, consider adding the Sonus Faber Gravis 1 or Gravis 2 subwoofer. That will give you what you're looking for. Dynamic power, and what I mean by dynamic power is not just the micro and macro dynamics but also how um, believable the energy is, is also the weakest of the three. Now, to be fair, it's also, in terms of its internal size, the smallest of the three. Uh, but what's interesting is that the transient speed is very, very good. So while the energy, in terms of its, its power isn't quite there, the speed is there. Um, and detail is quite possibly, uh, especially in the high frequencies, uh, the best of the three. Um, and that may be due to the fact that the, uh, the, the mid-range woofer driver is smaller and the, uh, as a result the harmonic balance has shifted a little bit more towards the high frequencies. Uh, so again, speed is wonderful. Now let's talk about the Electa Amator. Again, also Sonus Farber. Now this is a larger cabinet, so wider than the Olympic Nova 1. Um, it is, what's unique about the um, Electa Amator is that the cabinet is not made of, it's, it's made of wood, uh, uh, absolutely gorgeous. You have to see it, just like a solid cabinet wood, uh, solid, cab, uh, solid wood cabinet, I should say, um, and finished in such a, a, a stunning way. Now, it's not high gloss, it's actually satin, 
uh, which I actually like in this case because you see the wood. And then it's uh, finished in this dark graphite, sort of dark gray, not quite black. So you still see all the wood grain patterns and so on. And then complement it with this gorgeous um, um, marble. It's a dark marble called Marquina. And then, of course, the stand, and again, uh, um, ju it just sets the speaker up beautifully. Aesthetically, it's my favorite of the three. Um, sound, like the Nova One, it has this beguiling, sensuous sound. It just draws you in, um, but it's richer sounding than the Nova One. So where the Nova One is more neutral overall, the Electa Amateur is definitely more romantic, especially in the mid-range. Um, it's richer, it's thicker, you can hear it uh, with guitars, acoustic uh, instruments, voices, it's definitely richer. But not dark sounding, not thick sounding like um, maybe the earlier, uh, um, let's say 15, 20 year old Sonus Fabers were, or some of the very early British speakers. Uh, in fact, I noted here, uh, it reminds me of uh, British speakers. Um, the highs are very extended, but not quite as airy as the, and I'm talking about extreme highs now, uh, as the um, uh, Nova ones, but still extremely extraordinary, big, huge soundstage, not quite as wide, not by much though, not quite as wide as the Nova one, but cavernous, taller soundstage, uh, and depth is definitely better. You hear the layering better, it goes deeper. As I said, the image is also taller and more three-dimensional. So in these areas, the um, Electa Amateur is better than the Nova One. Bass and mid-bass definitely goes lower with more energy, with more conviction. Um, and again, dynamics also uh, to uh, uh, clearly surpass the Nova One doesn't have quite the same sense of speed, slightly throttled back, but I think that may be more to do with the balance, the, the tonal balance of the speaker. Overall, just a, a superb, wonderful speaker to listen to. Um, you just find yourself getting lost in the music. Uh, you can play almost anything you want with the exception of hard uh, music, hard driving, deep, very, very deep, bassy kinds of music or very, very loud kinds of music. It'll play quite loud, by the way, but it's not a full range speaker. It's not a floor standing speaker that can do that. Um, and keep in mind, floor sta uh, sorry, um, stand mounted speakers are designed for situations where you cannot uh, use a floor standing speaker with big woofers and so on. They're just for those applications where it could be a master bedroom, an office, or just uh, a situation where Aesthetically, you just cannot uh, uh, use floor standing speakers and bookshelves or stand mounts may be better for those purposes. And for those reasons, this speaker is absolutely stunning. Okay, now let's talk, oh, I forgot to mention the, um, the driver complement uses a one inch silk dome similar to the Nova um, and then a seven inch mid-range woofer uh, driver. And again, still using uh, paper pulp combination. All right, um, the AVA. So it uses a one inch silk dome tweeter. It doesn't have, of course, the Sonus Fabra patented damped apex dome architecture. It uses a six inch woofer. It's physically the most unassuming. If you look at just the speaker alone, it just looks like a basic um, black box, finish in beautiful piano finish but it looks nothing special, nothing out of the ordinary. However, when you mount it to the uh, museum grade plexiglass stand, then it suddenly looks very luxurious. It suddenly looks like a, a, a work of art. I actually like it very much. Very contemporary looking. It can still fit into a more traditional home or decor, but it, uh, yeah, the speaker by itself doesn't look like anything. You put it on that stand and it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, what does it sound like? Of the three, the mid-range is even more sweet than the Sonus Faber. And what I mean by sweet is that the details are there. It's just more laid back. It's not quite as evident. It's all there. It's, it's not missing in any way, shape, or form. So if we were to think about the Nova One as being the most obviously detailed in the mid-range, the um, Electa Amateur as being uh, slightly warmer sounding, the, um, the Ava is even more so. 
as I say, the details are all there. It's just more in the music itself. Um, the benefit of that, at least for me, when I played my music, now keep in mind, I don't play Audiofall recordings per se. I'll play them from time to time just to check on the system and make sure that it's all working well. But I want to play music that I care about. I play music that I love, that I grew up with and I'm still enjoying and, and I play music that I'm um, experimenting and, and trying out. And so that's the strength of this balance of the mid-range. Um, recordings that are harsh or brutal, it can actually uh, work with it. I can still enjoy the music. Uh, now mind you, the other two as well. Just that the other two will showcase the uh, quality of the recording more so than with the AVA. The high frequencies are extended and airy, not as airy and extended as the Electa Amator or the Nova. So in the highs, again, we're talking about the extremes now from about uh, 15, 14 kilohertz and up. Uh, it's a little bit tilted down, not quite as airy. Soundstage is the widest of the three. I would say actually uh, tied with the Nova. It's just as wide as the Nova, but taller. So uh, more cabinets than the Nova One. In that sense, maybe similar to the Electa Amateur. Depth is the best of the three. I get better depth and separation of the three, and the image uh, palpability is the best of the three. The Electa Amateur comes very close as a second, but the AVA is definitely better. Um, in terms of dynamics, also as good as the Electa Amateur, possibly a little bit better. The, the, um, the energy, however, in terms of the dynamics is better with the AVA. In other words, uh, while it can do the swings very well, all the little micro uh, um, dynamics and the macro dynamics, it has more conviction in its uh, dynamic power. Bass is a whole different ball game. This speaker, this tiny little six inch two way, bass goes down to, in my room, 32 hertz. It's insane. I, I, I think I talked about this in the original review uh, with the Maria um, Allison, we'll put a link in the description box. I was playing recordings that have some really deep bass content, and this did it. It not only did it, but it did it with conviction. Now, obviously, up to a certain point of volume, I can't crank it so loud that uh, uh, the room shakes like crazy, but enough that I actually felt the visceral bass dynamics, the kick drums, the double bass, the organs, it went down very low, shockingly so. Um, I've never heard a small speaker do bass at that kind of depth with power and conviction and at low and medium volumes. A lot of times with small speakers that can handle deep bass or some deep bass, you have to turn it up and then the bass comes out. Not with these speakers. Even at relatively low volumes, the deep bass was still very apparent. So in the deep bass, um, the AVA is far and away uh, the king, if you will. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples. <coughs> Check out a song by uh, A Mirror by Little Dragon, or even Prodigal Blues by Billy Idol. Um, they both will demonstrate the kind of energy and power that these tiny speakers will give you. Um, I mentioned earlier that I said in the Electa Amator, it reminds me of uh, early British speakers. Well, this sort of does, except with bass. A lot of um, early British speakers had that very polite sound, but with not a lot of dynamics and, and certainly not a lot of deep bass. This clearly has the dynamics and the deep bass, but it still has that sweetness, which is really, really nice. Um, Let's see if there's anything else that I wrote down here. Um, like the Electa Amateurs, the mid-range is beautiful for um, acoustic music as well. But in this case, it'll also play uh, rock, metal, uh, which I'll get to in the conclusions, where the Electa Amateur doesn't do uh, metal and hard rock quite as well. So anyway, what's the conclusion? Uh, I'm simply stunned at how good bookshelf speakers are today. Um, I certainly am aware, I just didn't think of it or know in a very deep way until I did this three-way comparison. 
the Olympic Innova One comes in as number three, but not in a bad way. Uh, again, understand what stand-mounted speakers are meant to do. They're not meant to be uh, as good as uh, and, and as all-encompassing as floor-standing speakers. They're designed for those of you who don't have a choice and you need uh, a bookshelf speaker. The Nova is certainly a speaker to consider. Um, however, for those of you who still want that deep bass, consider adding a subwoofer. It has the best clarity, has the best, most, probably the most neutral tonal balance overall. It's the most accurate of the three. Um, so that this way when you play a great recording, it'll sound amazing. When you play a bad recording, you'll know it's a bad recording. It's not going to hide it that much. Now it's got that zone as fiber warm, so it will help. But it is the most neutral of the three. The Electa Amateur um, is more romantic than the Nova. It's more forgiving. It's more beautiful sounding, if that's the right description. Um, it has a, a, a taller sound stage. It has a more cavernous sound stage. The image is more believable. It has a deeper sound stage. So in a narrow room, this is actually a good thing because it helps you suspend disbelief. It's got enough bass for most of us in, in this kind of a category. And it'll play almost all kinds of music pretty well. Um, and aesthetically, it's the most beautiful. I like of the three. It is the most sophisticated. It's the most luxurious finish. It is the most stunning looking speaker of the three. The EVA in terms of performance is the best for me because of the kinds of music that I play. Um, uh, I mentioned two recordings just now. I also play things like, for example, Rolling Stones. And a lot of Rolling Stones recordings are just not all that great. I like the music. It's not all that great, but I enjoyed it through the EVA speakers. And then I would switch over to ACDC, and I would crank the heck out of those speakers. And wow, they, they just do such a great job with ACDC. Um, then I would play Tom Waits, something more melancholic, something more um, uh, retros uh, uh, um, introspective, I should say. I could play uh, Billy Idol one moment, and I could play Billy Eilish another moment, and it would do all these genres so well. Uh, I played all kinds of powerful EDM. It did it so well. So from, from a performance standpoint, the Ava is my choice. Um, it's a hard choice, quite frankly, for, for I'm sure many of you. Uh, if you ever get a chance and you need to buy bookshelf speakers or stand mounted speakers, <coughs> Have a listen to these three and see what you think. Um, anyway, as always, I would love to see your comments below. Uh, if you've heard any one of these threes, what do you think? If, you've owned, if you have a pair of uh, stand-mounted speakers, what do you own and why do you like them? Um, I will say this. Regardless of the electronics that I used, all these characteristics were similar, uh, uh, whether it was through the uh, Macintosh or through the Maria or the... Uh, 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 what was the third one? <laughs> one eternity later. The Hegel. Uh, all the characteristics of the speakers were the same, just to varying degrees of differences. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.